Welcome to the Staging Area, episode 14. Today we are talking about the opening hand. To mulligan or not to mulligan. I am your host, your dad, Chris Smith. I am joined with Nate hey. Lucas, Trip Pants, Tyler Pease. I'm going to stop calling you that because I think you need a better nickname. And then we got the cameraman hey, you in, tell Phil that. in front of the camera this but, time. But you normally push the button. I know, but usually <laughs> I go, push the button, Marco, and then you're behind there. But now you're in front, so no one's going to push the button for us. So, on topic. Your opening hand pretty much dictates how your entire game is going to go. Absolutely. Um, if you're a five, six, seven-hander, an eight-hander, a four-hander <laughs> is super important. So what happens when your deck needs to possibly build out three or four foundations turn one and you don't find those foundations in your opening hand? You have to mulligan them. You gotta mulligan them. So uh, me personally, I play more mid to late game decks, so I need to have at least three to four foundations in my opening hand. Anything else other than that, I throw it away. It doesn't even matter most of the time. Even, yeah, yeah I, I usually just pitch it. And if I end up drawing more attacks and stuff, then I'm probably just going to have to die and just start over in game two. So uh, let's go with Marco. Uh, your strategy for your, your opening hand, what do you like to see? If What don't you want to see, basically? Because we're talking about mulliganing. So yeah. when, you, you know, when, you go, when, you, when you draw your opening hand, tell people what you well, want to see. One thing nobody ever wants to see is a hand full of uh, full of orange. Nobody wants to see that hand. That's also true. <laughs> uh, if I play assets, don't want to see assets and no foundations. You probably you do. If you play assets and actions, you probably don't even want to see them in your opening hand. Nope. It's I think I, a rule of thumb that I learned is it's usually unless it's like a super great foundation or your Vishamon, so it doesn't really matter. You never want to build an asset turn one. Like in our game earlier, yep. you built one asset, two foundations, his next turn he tried to drop petrol power. I forgot petrol so power was So he probably to wanted to mulligan that hand away <laughs> so he has more than two foundations in it. Um, so what happens when you do mulligan that hand away and you get another poop hand? You're stuck with that poop okay, hand. Okay, so what are, what are some, so I'm going to ask you Nate, when you say you mulligan and you get a crap hand again, what are some things that you can do to allevi alleviate that? Like, is there anything that you can possibly think of that you might want to do, like on your first turn while you're building? Say you're going second. I guess. You can you can try to pitch a card before you even draw. You can, so you review. You can review or you, you, re you review. Yes. Um, Tyler, um, would you play? Say say you have three foundations, or and say say you're mulligan into two foundations or three foundations and three three attacks. Let's say three three. So. I guess it's pretty bad. Say you're going first and you see that. Mm -hmm. So you, would you go foundation, 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 and then would you attempt an attack just to no. get the card out of your hand? No, I wouldn't. I don't attempt attacks turn one unless they're three difficulty. And usually I throw those first. Uh, because in a deck with safety threes, like we talked about in the last video, you can throw a three dip and then a two diff foundation, a one diff, and then you can hope to build the third if mm -hmm. it's a one mm -hmm. or so. Um, I I think that if you are, if you do, say you end up drawing a hand of five after, say you draw, you're a six-hander, mm -hmm. you mulligan, you draw five attacks. So you you, you review, right? Well, no, there, no, there's a way, no, that, that, no, no there is a way to get out of it. Um, you would go, you build, build well you would review first hope you get a foundation so let's mm -hmm. say we reviewed we got a foundation so we have two foundations now yeah so you would go build build and then attempt an attack oh yeah you have to because there's no other way you'd get to more foundations yeah, because you're not going to win a, on two foundations yeah that's a that's a yeah but well, yeah that's a it, that's an extra yeah. free review for your next uh, yeah, exact turn yeah you can also do backwards too if if you know you play safe threes or something or you know well, no, you can't, easy well, enough attack like, well oh. no you don't want to do that because you have to guarantee yourself a build turn one you can't just go well i'm gonna attack and then oh well if i fail it i fail it no you have to be able to build we're talking going first 
Oh, first, Mul first? Yeah, oh. you're going first after Mulligan, and then you draw five attacks in one in one fight. Well, I guess you don't get to review, but going second, you'd get to review. Yeah. Um, this topic is just a muddled mess. Um, because I guess really mulliganing comes down to the type of deck you're playing. Because mm -hmm. if you're playing like a mature 59 or or Rodney's Bomb Man from Last World or, or Tomahawk Man, you don't care. Yeah. You know, you may be mul you may mulligan away. But but like as a as a player who plays assets, actions, foundations, and attacks in my decks, like if I see if I see all four colors, that's usually a good indication to, uh, to pitch away. Oh, definitely. Because or else that's just one asset and two foundations and a six-hander. Um, yeah, it yeah, doesn't not, do anything. You're not getting very far yeah. on it. I think a seven-hander can 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 pocket assets. Like they don't, they can they can see a hand like that because they may have three foundations, two actions, and two attacks, and they're just like, well, cool, build, 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 and I'm good. And then yeah. I draw three, and then I can use, attack and use my actions or whatever. Uh, Mr. Quiet Pants over here, do you have anything to add into this conversation? Uh, back to the attacks, I mean, so you can, line, you can line up three foundations after an attack and you play no less than three, so you can go three, build a two foundation, build one foundation, build a zero. Well, that's, well, so if you're going first then, and you don't want to, do you want to risk? Well, I guess if you're playing a three diff attack, it's okay, but man, this, t this video sucks. Um, I'm just trying to think. If you're building an aggro deck where you can actually attack and get by with only a few foundations. Well, yeah, but I I, I, I guess I just disagree in that because I've just been ingrained into me that you always want to try to build as many as possible turn one. So it's just like you want to build first before even attempting an attack because there's no way, you, say, you, say you go first and you have two foundations and a couple attacks and you have a three diff attack or a four and you're like well okay and you play it and you fail it then you pretty much have lost why would i don't know i don't know why people wouldn't just build first and then attempt the attack because you're guaranteeing yourself you're trying because like back to our, our video last week you wanted to be able to maximize your build every turn while you're attacking and if you attack first and fail it you're not maximizing that turn you're going to want going first you always want to build first and then by happenstance, say you only have two foundations and four attacks, and then you can attempt an attack last. And if you fail it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't hurt you because you're going first and your opponent won't, probably won't be able to attack into you going on their first turn. So then you, then you review and then you're back up, you draw up to your six and then you should be able to build out. You may be able to throw a poke and then build or whatever, depending on what your deck type is. So um, I think a lot of it has to stem to what your deck is. Mm -hmm. Like, some decks want to see a bunch of attacks turns one and two because that's all they do is attack like low three diff curve probably, yeah, probably mostly on, on, a, two. on average you want to see at least three or four foundations on your first turn yeah on, on, normal normal on it's a average. good rule of thumb it's a good rule of thumb on average so uh, but i think that the mulligan it doesn't hurt decks technically that play tech sphere mm -hmm as much as it does other decks because right. you lose those cards for the rest of that game. Right. Tech Sphere is like, hey, I gotta get that card back, you know? So yeah. I guess you can be a little more liberal with your, you can be more aggressive with your mulligan if you yeah. play Tech Sphere. Or if you play like a seven hander, you can be more, you can be more aggressive with your mulligans because you're gonna draw more cards. And I think that if, um, if anything has taught us is that Cowboy Bebop has scaled the power up a bit, so you're gonna wanna make sure, I'm just gonna edit this part out because I just lost my train of thought, so. Um, anything before we close? Three, three to four gray, throw it away. Three to four gray? I wish I what? Three or four gray, or throw it or away. Or throw it away? Yeah, that's a good That's a good rule of thumb. You, what were you saying? I agree with that sentiment. Uh, I was going to say the, the number one thing is not to focus on uh, because I know playing like rain flush decks where I've drawn into two of my three rain flush in my opening hand and I just go, well, I'm not killing anybody this game. I have to mulligan out anyways. And uh, that's something that you always have to keep in mind as well. Yeah, I, and I think people get stuck on that. Like, oh man, I mulligan five attacks. I'm never killing you. Yeah. You do have a cycle. Yeah. Like, you have to have a backup plan. You, not really, it's not really, well, it's best to have two types of kill conditions in your deck so you're not relying on the one that you just that you just removed yeah, from the game. Yeah, you just had to throw out. Yeah, you just had to throw out. But, um, 
the, I don't know. I think it's it's on a player by player basis mm -hmm. and a deck by deck basis. I think so. Um, this video was weird and and it was actually a lot harder to talk about than I thought it would be. Dude, you know, there were literally three or four gray or throw it away as an actual real good, real good nursery rhyme for us UFS people. <laughs> So I think that might be it. Do we have any? Do you have anything else you want to add before we close? No. Because this video, I don't really care. It's like five, six, ten, ten minute video. I don't really care. I have nothing really else to talk about. Um, I think we can probably also couple in the. Uh, we could talk a little bit about um, a, a couple things that uh, newer players may not catch on at first. Want to talk about that? Well, we got some time. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think one thing that I see new players. Um, really focusing on is not fail blocking like as an extra review during their turn like they're holding all these cards and they're like well I can't block that and then they go into their next turn and they're holding them by foundations because yeah you they, have to kill your opponent, opponent. next turn the yeah. handful of foundations yeah, isn't going to do it but like, you can always just unless they're playing death charge that's something different you don't want to do that when they're playing death charge because yeah. then they get extra damage um, thanks Rio um, but um yeah, you just play out a block, even if you can't pass it. You just poof, get rid of it. It's an extra review. You get to review again, so it's like technically reviewing two cards in one turn. Uh, what's something that you see new players doing that they may be able to change, like a habit or something that new players do? Uh, this is kind of like personally with me, but no, not, a lot of, not a lot of new players read all their cards. <laughs> I don't think new... I, no, that goes for everybody, Marco. Yeah. Not everybody, Not reads, everybody the reads all like, the cards. Who reads cards? Like, yeah, I know. It's just numbers, man. Just numbers. Like, like that's not what I mean, though. Like, when I say read their cards, I mean they don't really read their cards to see the interactions that they really do with other cards. Oh, sure. God, are we going with this again? No, sure. what? Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's about it. Like, they don't, they don't look at, like, really neat combos or anything like that. They oh, okay. expand on their Sure, things. they just stay, like, linear. They just stay linear. With, with their kick. I'm going to put this, I, I'm playing Spike, so I'm going to put four of every one of I'm his I'm going to get in. plus one damage. That's about all I'm going to yeah. do. <laughs> that's boring. Uh, Nate, do you have anything for new tips for uh, anything that you see new players doing that they may be able to correct? Um... Just learning to build I, properly. Just the basics. Yeah. Learn to build properly. Uh-huh. Like the maximized build turn? Correct. Like that? Okay. Hey, Jake. Hi. You? No, because no. you're silent. Okay, so we're gonna go to we're gonna go to a close. Uh, sorry, this video was a complete shitstorm because it's just all over the place. We should have mulligan. We should have mulligan. <laughs> and on that, we're gonna end. Good night, everybody.